first off, I want to, my name is Bob Babcock, and I've been working with Tom and, and Tom Lawrenson and Sue Worf to be able to make a presentation to Rotary about a program that's been put together in, um, in Brantford. Um, has to do with the reducing of the carbon footprint. The program was set up a while ago, and we have some speakers with some slides that can uh, clear up some matters. So to start with, uh, Shirley McCarthy is the uh, chairperson of the Clean Energy Ad Hoc Committee. And uh, Shirley is going to start off with a little history and a little uh, few success stories about what we're doing and why we're doing it. And uh, so Shirley, if you could start off, that would be great. Sure. Uh, so the Clean Energy Ad Hoc Committee was created by Jamie Cosgrove and we started meeting in January 2019. Prior yeah. to existence, uh, Jamie had uh, done a couple of uh, good things for energy efficiency and renewables by creating a 4.3 acre solar farm on the Tabor property that uh, in its first year generated 1.24 million kilowatts of energy and has a projected cost savings overall of $1.76 million. He also contracted with Honeywell to do an energy efficiency project for the town buildings, which has resulted in an almost 30% reduction in energy use by all the town buildings. Uh, the Clean Energy Committee has had several projects, uh, one of which uh, was an energy plan for the Brantford, which Jamie wanted. We just completed it. It was unanimously approved by the Board of Selectmen and is on the town website if you'd like to look at it or make constructive comments because it is a living document and it'll be upgraded regularly. We uh, worked with the Green Bank to look at solar for some of the town buildings and we have uh, in a request via the Green Bank and the government, uh, solar on three of the five schools and also looking at a solar carport at the community house. We're in the process of initiating electrification of the town fleet with at least two electric vehicles uh, for the town fleet per year for the next five years. Um, and the last thing I'll mention that the big program we're working on is the Heat Smart campaign, which is in conjunction with People's Action for Clean Energy, which entails energy efficiency, education about air heat pumps, and eventually solar. And you hear more about that from Mike, our uh, Heat Smart coach. And I think I failed to mention who's on the committee. So that's Greg Ames, Bob Babcock, Elena Cahill, Marshall Cox, Bill Horn, Sharon Hutner, John Prince, and Dan Rabin. Diana McCarthy Berkery, the new sustainability manager for Brantford, is on the committee. And Mike is essentially on the committee as our Heat Smart coach. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Shirley. Um, we're going to hold questions until the end, um, but our next speaker will be Joe Roy. He is the general manager of CMC Energy, in, um, and he's going to make a presentation regarding the Home Energy Audit Program. All right. Thank you, Bob. Good morning, all. Um, so, yes, I work for a company named CMC Energy Services. Uh, we've been around for 43 years now. We're a woman-owned and operated company with uh, 270 employees, and we operate in 10 states. And we are one of the vendors that Brantford has selected to perform the home. Home Energy Solutions Program. So what is the Home Energy Solutions Program or HES IE, the Home Energy Solutions Income Eligible Program? Um, I want to just explain you know, that, that process a bit for you and what it entails. So this uh, HES program essentially is funded uh, by, a, uh, by rate payers through your energy efficiency bills. So the first part, um, how we get you scheduled, you talk to a customer service rep who would ask you questions regarding uh, your home, the age, uh, if you have duct work, et cetera, get those qualifying questions in and we get you on the schedule. When uh, a pair of uh, BPI uh, certified, Building Performance Institute certified technicians come to your house, um, they're spending the entire day there. And the first thing that they're doing, they're doing health and safety testing. Uh, so they're looking if you have gas lines, for instance, they're looking uh, for gas leaks, they're making sure that your appliances are vented correctly. Uh, we want to make sure that the home is safe uh, before we get to the actual work part of, of the job. Um, we install up to 25 
LEDs uh, per home. We're also looking at water conservation measures like faucets, uh, air, aerators, uh, shower heads, uh, pipe wrap for your, your, your warm water pipes. Then we do actual on the spot improvements. We have diagnostic testing. Uh, one thing, one of those items is called the blower door test where we actually quantify the air leakage in your home. We put a number to it to how drafty it is. We don't just do the diagnostic test though. We actually spend the entire day in the home uh, doing air sealing. So we go up in your attic and in your basement, um, <laughs> air seal penetrations. Uh, we can weather strip doors and windows and we're essentially identifying those places um, of, of, of energy loss and fixing it on the spot. If you have ductwork in your home, we also do tests for your ductwork as well. We ensure that the air is getting where it's supposed to be going. So if you have ductwork in your basement and it's not a conditioned basement, we'll seal the ductwork so that the air is getting where it needs to go, um, to the bedroom, to the living room, et cetera. Once we do all that work and we're there for the entire day, uh, we do sit down uh, with the customer. We review all of our findings. Uh, we run a comprehensive energy report. Uh, we sit down and review all of the rebates that are available to you through the program and we'll help you uh, point it in the right direction for contractors for next steps. And all of that work that we do, um, those core services, we call them, uh, save about two to $300 annually to just look at the program again, who's eligible, what else is involved. So there is a virtual pre-assessment now due to COVID. Um, so that is a way for us to essentially have a Zoom call very similar to this, uh, go around the home, identify opportunities and actually mail you out a box, a kit um, of light bulbs um, and other energy saving devices to get you saving um, as soon as possible. Um, who's eligible? You have to have essentially a one to four family home to be eligible for this service. Anything five units or greater goes to the multifamily program, which we can also offer those services as well. Um, so the HES Home Energy Solutions core services. So all of those um, items that I just explained to you, uh, the service offering is currently being done at no cost. Um, that there's generally a copay, and that copay ranges, um, you know, based on the year from seventy-five dollars to one hundred seventy-four dollars. But as of this point, through the end of the year, it's at no cost and uh, deep. And the utilities have agreed, due to COVID, uh, to help get 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 customers involved in the program that there would be no no copay. Um, the income eligible portion um, is always offered at, at no cost and there are certain uh, threshold criteria that the um, household has to make in terms of income to qualify for that program. I uh, wanted to touch on the current uh, rebates through the program right now. So once you have the Home Energy Solutions program done, if you want to go deeper and get those extra energy savings, um, the current installation rebates are $2.20 and that's for walls, attics, basement and garage ceilings. $2.20 will generally cover most, if not all of the cost. So the, the, the out of pocket uh, to have your home essentially weatherized and insulated um, is, is, is near zero right now. Um, and that's good for anyone uh, who has had the service done in 2020. You have until March 31st to get that insulation installed. Or if you're familiar with this program, like 20 something percent of the state is, um, if you've had the service done in the last three years, uh, you are eligible right now uh, to get that $2.20 um, insulation rebate as long as it's installed this year. Window rebates. Uh, so currently through the program, you get a double pane um, window rebate if you have existing single pane without storms and that's $50 per window. Um, there is a triple pane window rebate available out there. You actually do not need to have the home energy solutions program done for that. It's $100 per window and it can replace any existing double pane um, but that does need to be installed by the end of this year. Air source heat pumps. Uh, so there are uh, rebates and incentives out there for heat pumps as, as well. Um, it's currently $500 per ton for all ducted uh, and non-ducted air source heat pumps. Uh, for customers who do go through the HES program and have existing electric heat in their home, they qualify for an additional $1,000 per ton um, of, of uh, rebate, which could be $1,500 per ton total uh, for those that aren't familiar with what a ton is, a ton is one ton of air. That's generally, the rule of thumb is about 600 square feet of home uh, per ton. So if you have an 1800 square foot home, you'd have about a three ton system and you can get your, your rebate that way. Uh, lastly, I wanted to touch on a special air source heat pump pilot that, that the utilities are offering to the program. Uh, this is different because for the first time, uh, they're incentivizing to displace oil or propane heat. So if you have those existing fuel types in your home, uh, you'd now qualify uh, for this potential air source heat pump uh, pilot. So 
again, up to $1,500 per ton there. So um, I know it's a lot of information in a short amount of time, but I wanted to share that with you. Um, and um, this ties very well into our Heat Smart campaign that Brantford is running. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass it back on to Bob. Joe, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is Mike Cohen. Mike Cohen is the coach for Brantford for the Heat Smart program. And the Heat Smart program is basically the air heat pump program. So Mike, why don't you pick it up and take it uh, into the Heat Smart Brantford program. Okay, the Heat Smart Brantford program wants to bring money, energy, and CO2 savings to Brantford. So the Heat Smart program is a four-step program. It starts off as uh, Joe talk, spoke to you about with a free home energy solutions audit for your home. Then with uh, the, the uh, advice from the Heat Smart auditor, the, uh, you get recommended energy efficiency improvement. Step three, you would install a heat pump, and in step four, you would install a solar panel. Now, the only thing that's required is that you go to step one, and each step save money, energy, and CO2. So why should you join the Heat Smart program? You save money, you save energy, you pollute less and make the air cleaner and more healthy, and you produce less CO2 to help fight global warming. So the first step has been well explained by Joe. It's the, uh, the uh, home energy solution test audit, and uh, we've, got a, a, we've got a good explanation of that. Step two is the deeper, deeper energy retrofits. This, these typically include a basement ceiling and banjo joist insulation, attic insulation, or as Joe described, windows, and uh, also possibly more efficient appliances. Substantial rebates are available for these uh, applications. Step three is a heat pump installation, and a heat pump is like an air conditioner that can run backwards in the winter. So a heat pump can both heat and cool your home, and it runs on electricity. So the heat pump installation um, will have a vetted recommended heat pump installer. Rebates of $1,000 per ton are available for heat pumps. Heat pump can save money and substantial amounts of CO2 emissions, especially when combined with renewable rooftop solar power. Even greater subsidies are available for income eligible families. So this is a program that saves money at each step. Why install a heat pump? Heat pumps are cheaper than oil, propane, or electrical resistance baseboard heating. Heat pumps use electricity instead of fossil fuels. Substantial rebates are available and financing is at very attractive rates. So this is a, this describes how heat pumps save money. This is heat pump on the left and is a natural gas, oil, propane, you save even more, and you save the most against base force electric. Here we've run the numbers for you. I'm an engineer, I can't help but do this. Make a spreadsheet. But at each step, you save money. What we've done is we've, we've uh, started off with the cost of the application, subtracted out the rebate, come up with a net total after the rebate. And then we, we, at the financing rates, we've, we've, we've uh, calculated cost per year, then accounted for the savings and come up with a net savings. So with all these uh, steps in the rebate process, you save money in the first year because your cost savings are greater than the cost of carrying the loan on the on the application that you provided. So here's the takeaway. The home energy solution saves about $250 a year. The uh, additional uh, insulation for a typical 200, this is for a typical 2,000 square foot home heated by oil. The uh, energy savings for the additional uh, um, insulation would be about $400 per year. The heat pump itself saves about $147 per year. So that adds up to 
dollars per year savings, the whole program is very attractive. Adding rooftop solar will save even more money. And if you need to replace an old furnace or are income eligible, well, this program is even more attractive. Step four is installation of solar rooftops. And I'll let uh, uh, Dan Rabin describe that. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, we look at the solar as the, as the final step that is um, Joe and Mike have described the efficiency aspects, and we think that the solar is a great way to actually generate energy from the from sunlight. Um, I think most people are familiar with the mechanics of it, that it goes on top of the roof, so we're not going to deal with that today, but just look at it at, at a very uh, high level. So solar rooftop panels save money, and um, they become even more attractive as the utility cost rises. The, uh, they decrease our dependence on fossil fuel, and that impacts the pollution, carbon monoxide, particulates, all those, all those bad things, as well as the greenhouse gases that contribute to global warming. Um, the whole installation, evaluation installation process creates local jobs, and supports the local economy. And um, the state of Connecticut has set certain uh, uh, goals for uh, clean energy and our whole program is uh, guided to support that, those goals and help Connecticut contribute to meeting those environmental goals. Next slide, please. This slide illustrates how the uh, utility rate for electricity rises over the years from year one to 20, it might go up 50% or so. Whereas if you install solar, the, the rate of rise is much less rapid. It starts out lower and it ends up much lower. And um, something like five years ago, we installed solar on our roof and I can tell you that this figure is really true. We pay under $10 every month for electricity, a little bit more in the winter and over the course of the whole year, we pay a total of about $300 for electricity. Next slide, please. So where are we now? Um, as of last year, there were 279 residential installations of solar in Brantford. The town, as Shirley mentioned, has really been out in front of this issue. The high school, the firehouse, and the transfer station all have um, solar installations. And she mentioned the, the Tober, uh, Tabor solar farm that, uh, that powers the uh, sewage treatment plant. So, all right, so why now during the uh, Heat Smart campaign, you get great rebates and reduced rate financing, and those will be avail available through the end of the year. That means you should really start right away. Um, you get a vetted Heat Smart, uh, you get a vetted HES auditor and heat pump installer of, will be available. We have the negotiated, we hope to negotiate a uh, discount on the heat pump and you start energy savings and energy and money savings right away. How to get started, go to heatsmartbrantfordconnecticut.org, fill out the I'm interested form and we'll get back to you with information on how to get started with, it, with an HES audit. So thank you very much for listening to our presentation and remember to go to heatsmartbrantfordct.org. That's not com, that's .org. And that's where you can get the uh, fill out a form and we'll get back to you with how to get started. And that's the end of our presentation. Okay, um, to kind of finish up, um, how do I get on here? <laughs> to, finish, to finish up, uh, what we've, again, thank you for allowing us to present, but what we've tried to do today is uh, let uh, Rotary know who we are define what we're doing, talk about some savings of dollars, hard dollars, and uh, let you know that, that, that we're working within the state of Connecticut goals for these programs. 
But now I'd like to open it up for uh, questions. If anybody has a question uh, relating to any part of our program, uh, please feel free now to, uh, to ask those questions. Any questions? Bob, this is Sharon Grayson. Hi, Sharon. Good morning. Um, do you have um, do you have a sense of what a reasonable achievable goal is for the number of homes that could have solar power? Um, and and where I know it, your figure just said what two hundred and ninety seven, and that was as of last year. Um, what's what's possible? What do you think? What do you Mike? think? I think, Mike, you have done some uh, looking into this. Well, maybe Dan has a good idea, but, you know, probably about half the homes in this town. You take it. You take it. <laughs> probably about half the homes in this town have a roof that's uh, um, pointing south and is not in the trees. So uh, anyone who has a sunny roof the can... Uh, the answers to other questions, Anyone who has a sunny roof can benefit from having solar rooftop power. Dan, did you want to add to that? No, I think we. Uh, I think our figures are that there are something like twelve thousand residences in the town, and as Mike said, about half of them are would be appropriate. So, you know, having done three hundred and with a with a possible market of six thousand, we think there's a lot of growth. Um, you know, how many will we? Will we contribute? We're, you know, it's it's a matter of uh, ambition and how many people like yourselves we can engage in the process. So, you know, if we'd like to do 50 or 100 of the heat heat pumps as well as the solar, that would be, you know, quite ambitious, I think, for the first period, but um, as many as we can get, really. Is there is there any... Um initiative with so we have so many condos and apartment buildings in town where do they fall in this plan well depending upon the condo um, depending on the condo uh, contract we may or may not be able to get in there to uh, install mm -hmm. a heat pump or um, put solar on the roof that uh, gets a lot, you know, that gets into problems with the condo uh, association uh, covenant. But uh, everyone, including condo owners, can do the heat smart uh, um, HES audit. So that's a good place to start. Thank you. I would add a comment. This is Chuck O'Connor. I'm going through the process right now of putting a 14,000 kilowatt system on my house. Um, and have done the HES audit, I'd highly recommend it. It's no charge. It, um, even in a house that was fairly energy efficient, uh, we found a few things to do. Uh, and, um, you know, as I look at the savings from the solar system that, that we've designed for our house, uh, our payback, we're going to own it. Our payback will be about six years, a little less, or just about that point. Depends a little bit on weather. Uh, but if you look at the return on the investment over 25 years, the rate of return is 13% for us. So um, there can be some significant savings when you start to translate it into an investment of financial uh, means, as well as looking at what we're doing for the environment, which is really what got me started on it. So I'm a proponent for sure, but ask me in a couple of years how it really worked out. I'll give you some real world numbers, but based on what everybody else is seeing, I think we're going to do just fine. Uh, there's a principle of um, with solar power uh, called neighborhood solar, where you take a group of houses whose roofs all point in different directions. So some are generating in the morning, some are generating in the afternoon, some are generating in the evening. And it seems to me that uh, condominiums are ideal for that because they do face in all sorts of different directions and they pool the electricity that's generated. Um, and so they, they all benefit. Is there any move towards neighborhood solar in Branford? Hi, this is Diana McCarthy Berkeley. Can you hear me? Yes, I am. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I don't have my camera on. It's lovely to meet you for a second time in two weeks. 
Um, we, the Energy Committee is doing a wonderful job right now of kicking off these fantastic educational campaigns on pests and heat pumps and solar. Uh, and I can say that um, part of the discussion uh, later on today after this meeting is with an organization to uh, uh, really fully understand how exactly we can bring solar to all different stakeholders and groups in, a various, in various different programs, community shared solar, um, you know, independent solar, purchasing, leasing, and, and you know, even battery backups. Um, are all going to be included in that conversation. So uh, my answer to that, Tom, with your beautiful solar panel behind you, um, is stay tuned. There will be more. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tony Terry had a question. Okay. I've got a question for Michael, the engineer. Um, Michael, I understand that say, over the past 10, 12 years that uh, solar arrays have become far more efficient, that uh, they aren't shut down when there's a shadow that crosses them, for example and uh, that they do not necessarily require totally direct sunlight. Can you speak to that or correct my uh, misconception? Mike, you're on mute. You're on mute, Mike. Mike, unmute yourself. Tom, can I you- I know that solar is getting cheaper and more uh, cost-effective in the last two years. I don't know specifically about the, uh, the uh, not being able to produce through it when it's in shade. Well, well I, I can tell you a little bit I about can tell that, you a bit about that. Diana. <laughs> yeah, ahead, say, Diana. You, um, if you, Diana. Thanks, Tom. If you go to the transfer station um, in Brantford, you will see a beautiful array up there. And on the back of it are what we call micro inverters. Um, Microinverters have the opportunity to take the energy that is normally strung cell by cell uh, on a solar panel and allow it to sort of jump and hop across the way. So traditionally, if you hit um, traditionally, if you had a solar array out and you had a shadow that was cast on it, the energy would sort of get stopped like um, like a roadblock on a train track. But now with the microinverter technology you're actually able to redirect it so that it goes around uh, any shadows that are there. So that technology is, is there. And uh, I'm trying to think that those, uh, those panels were installed at the transfer station, I believe in 2012. Um, so it's been out there for a while, but yeah, you know, technology, you know, solar is just like computers, just like televisions, um, you know, and phones, it gets better. You know, every six months, there's a new version out there. What we're finding with solar is that, um, you know, for the most part, there's really no difference in what they're changing in the technology. It's just how much of the silicon wafer can, um, you know, increase its surface area to collect more sunlight and generate a few more electrons uh, each day. So it's not a, a tremendous jump. Um, but the nice thing about that is because there's not really moving pieces on your solar panels, they don't, there's no wear and tear and they last a significantly long time. Power production warranties on solar arrays for anybody who's installed them at their house probably is around 25 years guaranteed. Um, and then after that, they start to degrade, you know, like that here and there. Yeah. So, um, um, and, you know, we see solar panels up on the, the Hubble uh, space station. That is what they were sent out there in the 70s. And they're still out there producing wonderful energy. And I see Sharon is raising her hand uh, from the Energy Committee. So I'll stop talking now. Um, just another testimonial for somebody who lives in um, a condo. I had the energy audit done, and again, I have to repeat everybody's um, wonderful feelings about it because it really truly is a great in service that is being done. And they recommended that I insulate my attic at the cost of $4,000. And because the rebates have increased so much this year, that has completely cost me not one cent. So the rebate covered $4,000 worth of insulating my attic. So I can't tell you how happy that makes me and I hope um, everybody else can take advantage of this kind of program as well. Thank you, Sharon. Thank uh, just you. on the question of uh, panel efficiency, a friend of mine put in solar panels 15 years ago 
Um, he was told his payback would be six or seven years, but actually he paid it back in three years because they forgot to include bounce off the, the snow. This is upstate New York. Um, the efficiency of the panels at the time was just over 10%. The panel behind me here uh, is a modern panel and the efficiency is typically over 20%. Uh, the, there are more panels on the way. And while we keep talking about putting panels on the roof, I don't think it'll be long before we start talking about making the roof out of panels. We won't be putting you know, metal frames and then bolting on panels. We'll be simply making the roof out of panels. And think about it, a solar panel roof is going to last a lot longer than the composite roof that most people have. So why put panels on top of a roof whose lifetime is less than the lifespan of the panels? Right. Very good, Sam. Very good. Okay, any more questions? I, I have a quick question. Yes, Bill. Oh. No. Um, we're in an HOA here uh, oh, that Jeff. prohibits solar panels. And we've had some discussion and, of course, uh, lots of opinions and whatnot. But uh, in other states, I believe there are laws called solar access laws that prohibit HOAs from banning uh, solar panels. Is there any movement here in Connecticut in that direction? either in Connecticut or on the federal level? Anybody on our committee have an answer to that? I'm not aware of it. I am not aware of it. No, I'm not aware of it either, but I would love to get what information you might have. Yeah, I believe they're called solar access laws. Solar access laws. Okay, well, I will definitely um, pursue that. Several of the states have already enacted them, and uh, that prohibits HOAs from prohibiting the installation of solar panels. Sure, sure. Jim, Jim, this is Diana, and so I mentioned before, we're gonna be meeting with the Solar Foundation after this call. Um, so we can definitely ask them about that. Um, but if you have contact information that maybe you can send over through Tom or um, through uh, Bob, that would be great. And I'd love to follow up on that conversation if your homeowners association specifically is very interested in um, you know, making that change. Okay. That was Diana that just spoke, and Diana is the new uh, uh, employee of the town of Brantford, our sustainability and compliance person. She's done a remarkable job. We've uh, really brought this program uh, uh, forward a lot faster than uh, we ever thought. Um, but as you can see in today's presentation, Diana has added a lot to the, uh, the facts that we all need to make decisions. Um, but Okay, any other questions from... So I think a question. Yeah, I did. I had a quick question. I was I'm starting to look into solar at my house, but my next door neighbor has solar. And he mentioned um, last month or the month before, he's been paying like $19 a month or whatever um, for his electric bill. But he said that there was just a big, Eversource just changed their billing over the summer so that all of a sudden he started to get much larger bills from them because of the uh, delivery charges, I guess, or what? I, I don't know what it is, but he was uh, complaining about that. I don't know if you guys know about that at all. Joe, can you add to that? We haven't experienced that. Ours, ours went up <clears throat> like from 942 to 952 a month or something. <laughs> but there's real, yeah, there's like a variety of different ways um, that, you know, you can get an escalator. I don't know if your uh, friend specifically purchased his array outright or if he's leasing um, or has a power purchase agreement and somebody else owns it and it sits on his roof. So there's a variety of reasons why that could go on. I do know that the utility company did try to say, um, you know, from moving forward, if you install after, I think it's after this December, um, if you, you know, get installed after 2020, that they would try to charge you for the delivery rate. But considering, um, you know, you're generating your own power, you, you have no generation charge, obviously. So they're saying, well, you're sending your electrons out to the grid while you're not home. And then, you know, we're sort of your battery storage. And then you buy, you, send, you get them back from us in the evening when the sun's not out. So they're trying to find a way to, you um, uh, uh, charge, I guess, basically for that uh, delivery. Um, but I believe it's still in discussion up at the uh, state legislature, and um, we can talk more about that also offline. And not not to 
turn away from the solar conversation. But if anybody is interested in getting, you know, solar or heat pumps or wonderful insulation, the first step to all of this, um, sort of, you know, eating your vegetables before you get your dessert is getting uh, the HESS assessment and improvement um, service done at your house, which is really, I've never seen the incentives be as good as they are right now um, with all of those programs. And that's definitely, you know, the first step in learning more about is your house right for solar? Is your house right for heat pumps? Do you need insulation? Do you need better light bulbs or water heater, water heaters or other appliances? So. Um, this organization, your your energy committee here, really has designed a wonderful program to help answer you know your questions further. Joe, did you have something to add? Okay, great. Okay, yeah, I don't know if we. Uh, thank ahead, you very Tom. much. Uh, a topic that I'm sure has caught everybody's attention. Saving money seems to do that. Uh, so. <laughs> um, but thank you very much. Uh, we've got the website. Uh, Ellen, I'm sure, has uh, taken a note of the website, so it'll be in our tidings, which is our weekly newsletter. Uh, so it'll be there for you, for everybody next week uh, if you haven't written it down. So thanks very much. Uh, we look forward to seeing Branford's collective electricity bill get lower and lower as uh, time goes on, thanks to your efforts. And we should all feel a wee bit warmer over the winter too. So thanks for today and thanks for what you're doing in general.